Alex Belfield. Well, well, no, it's no karaoke, definitely. You just have to, uh, it, it's about emotion, and you, you need to be able to sing in an emotional way, but still remember the technique involved, because it's all pretty, pretty hard and pretty dif- difficult. Now, you've played Jean Valjean and Javert, which are two of probably the best roles in the world in musical theatre, probably other than The Phantom. These are the biggest roles, really, for any men to perform, aren't they? Uh, well, I think so, yeah. Definitely for uh, for people with my sort of voice and dramatic ability, if, if you're a high baritone or a tenor, this is, these are the, the roles you want to play. Now, Cassie, your role, of course, is the kind of epitome to what he does, which is insecure and a little role, but a massive voice. Now, how do you do that? You're so little. Um, I don't know. I guess I have to thank my mother. She passed her voice down to me, and I'm kind of just working with it, for, you know, for as, for as long as I can work with it. You know, she's a great role to play. And it, you know, on the surface, I think it looks quite simple. She loves a guy. He doesn't love her. But actually, she's quite a complex character. She had quite a tough upbringing, and she's feisty, and she's quite selfless which you know are great emotions to play now we first got to know you on the x factor x factor to west end theater is kind of okay fine but x factor to lem is you must have been the only one with any talent in the whole show <laughs> <laughs> oh i couldn't ever pass comment could i um you know i i worked in musical theater when i was a child so it kind of wasn't that i decided to do a reality tv show and then i just decided i wanted to get a musical theater it was something that i had I'd known before, and um, and the X Factor was an opportunity that I will never regret, and it was it worked really well for me, and and now I'm here, back to doing what I you know always wanted to do. Can't see Gareth Gates playing Jean Valjean, can you? I don't think so, no, no. But, but you, <laughs> give give him a few years, you never know. Eh? Tell me about the show every night because it's a long show and it's a hard slog. I just love it. The music is is probably the most moving of any musical that's ever been written. Well, it's not that uplifting stuff that you have in Mamma Mia or uh, We Were Rocking and stuff like that. But it does have a happy ending. We all go to heaven. Well, except for me, of course. <laughs> it's perfect. Actually, helps it a lot. So I, I'm, I was always hoping that some of some members in the cast. I really hate so I can really focus on that it helps my character a lot which ones in particular would you like to name that you hate the most <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's why it's, it's quite hard in this in this, in this cast because I, I, I do like uh, most of them uh, so uh, that's good isn't it who did you hate from X Factor I didn't hate anybody I think hey, I, I think people expected me to hate people like Simon Cowell who eventually I ended up getting on incredibly well with because I think it's oh, such yeah. a strange not that well HP <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a very strange experience and I think this, I just don't, didn't have enough time to dislike anybody people that you just don't really speak to and people that I don't speak to anymore we're here to do a job and, and even the X Factor I was there to do, to do a job so I try not to occupy my time with bothering with yeah, what other yeah. people do it's quite hard not to when you see people day in day out but I think it's important for the sake of the show as well and the company to just try and just get on with it so who were you with I was with Sharon Osbourne it was the year that Steve Brookstein won so it was the first we were kind of like a prototype I guess now what happened to him then I don't know he sent me a lovely text message the other day saying that we must catch up and well he's got plenty of time on his hands hasn't he that's not what he meant is it (laughs) 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 I think he's working he's working on stuff and you know he's he's happy and I think he's I think he's good Happy is good, success is another thing. And this is my problem with X Factor. It is an entertainment show, and I think that's where it really should stop now. And the thing about showbiz, you can be famous for one year, but can you be famous the next year? And you can have one hit series, can you have two? Mm-hmm. I suppose with musical theatre, what it's about is churning it out every single night consistently. No, I, d- I mean, I definitely agree with you. I think the good thing about these shows is if you get even one person from 30,000 that is any good and that will go on to do something then I think that's great we all know it's it's a TV show and I think you have to go into it knowing that I thought Leona last year was great and I think that she is talented and therefore she will she will do well and I guess if you find one person out of however many thousand then that's good that's good going but ultimately it, it's TV what do you make of these shows where they're putting Grease on and they're putting Joseph on when you spent your entire life dedicated to the cause and you love musical theatre you know it you've trained it and you've been doing it yet they seem to jump the queue don't they I wasn't born in that generation of that knows reality TV, so uh, for me it wasn't it wasn't a question of, of doing that. But I think a lot of young kids now feel they have to do that to have, to get any chance, which I don't think is true, because uh, as a result from all these uh, shows, I think there's so many famous people per square foot in London that what we're going to do with them all. So after a while, what you have one one person is famous for a year, and then they need somebody else, and they just dump him. What about the repetition, Cassie? How do you deal with this? fact that you're doing the same show in the same order the same songs the same words every night how do you keep it fresh 
Well, I guess it is, you know, the same songs and the same show, but it's different every night because, yes, you're, you're still trying to portray the same character every night, but depending on how you feel or what you get from other actors and how, you know, and how they're kind of, you know, expressing themselves, it's always different because you can't ever emulate the same, exactly the same thing every night. And um, I don't think it would be honest if you went on and tried to emulate exactly the same thing. So I think it's just about going with it and, and staying true to the text and staying true to what you you should be saying and just saying it however you know it it comes out on the night i guess that's just my way of mm. of looking at it there's no glamour about it i think that's what people who do these uh, other sort of shows uh, should realize as well it's not a glamorous life you just have to work hard at it and that's and take it how it comes and uh, even though backstage it might be a bit less or whatever uh, that doesn't really matter because you, you just have to be doing a good job uh, on stage is theatre as good now, HP? You've been doing it a little while. Is it as good now as it was, say, ten years ago? Are they coming up with the new stuff? I don't seem to see as many new musicals at all coming, let alone plays. Yeah, well, well, I'm originally from Belgium, so we don't have that problem. But I do, I do believe that. Well, there's a lot of revivals of stuff, and I don't always like to see that. I like to see new things happen, really. Why is it then that there aren't people creating great hits like Lemmy's Twenty One Years On? Well, you don't. Well, if you, if not everybody knows how to just create a, mu uh, a hit. You never know that. But uh, I'm sure it's a question uh, of money as well. I mean, you, you need you need a lot of money if you want to invest in something that might not work. It's not easy. Tell me about your lifestyle and how you get here every night to do the show, and especially on those two show days, which must be just awful. I see there isn't a steamer today. Normally, I'm surrounded by this puffing of steam around me. You're not into that. Who've you been seeing then? All <laughs> kinds of prima donnas, well, don't you? Can, you? you can only, I think you should only steam if something's wrong. If, yeah. if everything's fine, then you don't need anything. So. Uh, I, I think everything's fine for the moment. Then. Oh, good. Well, that's a relief. So, so what do you do daily then? Lots and lots of water, and I can't stand water, so it's really painful. Mm. But I have to just drink loads yeah. of water and 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 eat well. I think the night before a Wednesday matinee, I run home and get into bed as quickly as possible, and then get up as late as possible. Um, but on most days, you kind of get up and I think you have to. Energy creates energy, as mm. my mum used to say. Oh, she's so right. And. Uh, you just have to get up and, and go about your day and just make sure you're looking after yourself. Frank Sinatra once said that his nightmare in the end was not sounding like Frank Sinatra. Are there days when you wake up and worry whether that big noise that you make... I've seen you in this show twice now. How do you come to terms with that? Is it going to be there tonight? Uh, what well, you worry every day when you wake up. You wake up and the first thing you check out, oh, is, it, is, it, is it working? But that's, that's just the reality of, of, of doing this sort of job, and uh, you just have to get on with it. Of course, after all this time, I do know certain things I, sh I can do if it's not all right, and I can get it fixed and something like that. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it's what you wake up with. Let's talk about the technical stuff, because as is the case with all these West End and Broadway shows now, they're so clever. Uh, there's so many things happening. This is probably one of the most pure and simple shows, but there's still a lot going on. When that goes wrong, I suppose that's what you're paid for, isn't it, as a West End and Broadway star? Not when it goes right, because that's easy. Well, actually, that's, there's something true about that, because I, I always feel that if something goes wrong on stage, if it would be the scenery or the people who make mistakes or whatever, I think then that's when you get a great adrenaline kick to try and sort it. You try and compensate by giving a different sort of energy to make it look like it's how it should be. One of my favourite things is on telly when the news people stop the auto queue and then they don't know what to say. And I think, well, hang on, any idiot can read. Yeah. How are you with that now being comfortable with the role? Do you know it inside out now? Um, I think I'm pretty sure I know it inside out now. But the thing about uh, Les Mis is that when I'm, when I'm on, I, you know, as Eponine she she's kind of on and that's it and I don't have a break until it gets to the interval um, and then obviously on my own little fall of rain you kind of it's the sort of show that if you forget your words or you pause you, the show is continuing mm. you know at, yeah. at, at yeah. speed of light and so you've just got to, you just got to, to be on top of it you're 20 years old and you're the star of one of the biggest shows in the world and you're in the West End. Where do you go from here? Is there any bigger dream than this? Because really you're in the best musical that's the longest running, therefore it must be the most successful. <laughs> it makes a whole ton of money. People will always come and see it. There's no sign of it closing, so you're not going to be worried that every day it could close like so many shows in the West End. Where do you go from here? You know, I mean, first and foremost, I just want to keep working because I think to be successful in this business isn't about how much money you make or how famous you are. It's about if you can go to work every day and have a job to go to every day. Oh, there are so many things I'd love to do. I'd love to get into to film and, and all that, all those sorts of things. My, my dream role really would be to, to be an original in a new musical. 
to create a role I think for the, you know for something I've never done and that for me would be my ultimate dream at the moment but of you know just working what about things like dropping wind or things on stage do you do little tricks on each other to make each other laugh I have never done so ever <laughs> in my entire career yeah, HP is HP would never do anything like that I've had it done to me yeah. oh yeah in this show I'm naming no names it was stinky. It wasn't. Was it on stage? It was on stage. On stage, yeah. <laughs> on stage just before I had to sing on my own. Uh. <laughs> Everybody seems to keep coming to this. What, what do you think it is then that makes this show a success when so many are failing? I think it's just what, what it makes a, a, su- a success for us is the same thing, is that you're addicted to being able to, to, to portray these emotional characters and uh, I think uh, the people uh, come and see it can recognise themselves in those characters Listen, congratulations on everything Cassie and HP uh, they're the two big stars here um, at Les Mis, which is on at the Queen's Theatre in the West End it really is probably the, the grand dame of, of musical theatre at the moment it's the one that remains that it still churns it every night and I don't know how you do it on those two show days, I've seen matinees and late shows on a, on a Wednesday and Saturday and it still sounds the same and it really is as good as ever thank you for talking to me Thank you. Thank you. The Alex Belfield In Conversation podcast with daisymedia.co.uk. Alex Belfield.